This is Cutefish OS. I have it loaded up here as a virtual machine in KVM, and you're probably thinking the same thing that I was when I first took a look at this desktop, which is, man, this looks a hell of a lot like Mac OS. In fact, I think that this might be the most similar to Mac looking desktop that I've ever seen from a Linux distro. Now, the Cutefish distro, Cutefish OS, it is based on Debian, so nothing too crazy there. But what makes it interesting to me is that it comes with this desktop environment that's also named Cutefish. Now, if you actually dive into the code of Cutefish, you'd see that it's based on Qt. It's very similar to KDE. In fact, you can even see that KWin is the window manager that it's using under the hood. But it is customized enough for it to be its own desktop environment, okay? It's not just like it's a KDE Rice or something like that. And as far as I know, this is the only distro that ships with the Cutefish desktop environment pre-installed, although it is possible to install this on some other distros like Arch, for example. But why don't we just explore this beauty, okay? So down here, we have the launcher, and I think that this is even the same icon uh, that or at least very similar to the launcher icon that's on Mac. So of course, launcher, that lets you launch different apps using a nice GUI instead of launching it from the command line like a cool guy. Uh, although I don't actually think I really know anyone that launches GUI programs from the command line. That's kind of weird. Most of the Linux nerds I know, they get into things like D menu for their CLI apps or for their non-CLI apps rather. But I think that GUIs like this, these very polished, nice looking GUIs. They're very important for that mainstream adoption of Linux. It would probably be really easy for a Mac user to transition to a desktop like this instead of them being thrown into the deep end and like making them use only suckless utilities on Gen 2. That might be a little bit too difficult for them. But getting back to this cute fish desktop environment, we've also got a file manager down here and we've got all of the usual shortcuts to things like desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, and trash over here on the left hand side. And if we go into our global menu, so the global menu for everything is just gonna appear in the um, upper left hand corner here. Well actually we have to right click to get some things um, for the terminal. And same thing for other applications, of course, right click is going to bring up that menu, but global menu, things like file edit help, they're always going to be up here in the upper left hand corner. I think that that's the same way that it works on Mac OS. If you can't tell, it's been forever since I've actually used Mac OS. I think since like back when I worked at Geek Squad or maybe one of my coworkers at my other job had a question about something, but I haven't really had to service it since my Geek Squad job and never personally owned a Mac. Um, but we can go to the about section of this file manager and we see that this is also a file manager that's designed for Cutefish. So as far as the uh, UI goes, a lot of this stuff is actually designed by the Cutefish team instead of them doing what most just works distros do, which is take something like KDE or XFCE and they try to rice it to make it look very similar to Mac OS or to Windows. But no, they're like, hey, everything else out there, I guess, wasn't good enough for them. So they went ahead and rolled their own. Next up on the dock is the terminal, which I've already got open here. Uh, so again, you can see that this terminal is looking uh, really nice. You can right click to open up the settings of it and then you can change the font size like that, the um, more common shortcut, control shift like plus and minus, doesn't seem to work. So that might throw you off if you're, I guess, used to other distros and you try this out. Uh, but this is probably how, well, I don't even know if a lot of regular users are gonna be opening the terminal, but I guess this would be how a regular user would do it. Uh, and then of course, same thing with transparency. And then you can enable, uh, window blur, which, does this actually do anything? Okay, yeah, it does. It's just a little bit buggy. You have to like click it and then click over here <laughs> for it to uh, get enabled. 
Now, if I run a quick top command, I actually should probably maximize this. We can see how much memory we're using. So about 1200 megs of RAM, uh, just over a gig, which is pretty standard, you know, as far as, uh, well, if we count all the operating systems, right? Mac and uh, Windows as well, that's, that's kind of standard, actually a little bit on the light side if we compare it to the bloat of Windows. Uh, now, as far as Linux distro go, distros go, maybe it's a little bit too heavy. Maybe it's a little bit too bloated, especially to someone who uh, runs a tiling window manager. But hey, look, Mac users, they're perfectly fine with paying out the ass for RAM. And as far as I can tell, this is something that's kind of meant for them, right? Someone who's coming from a Mac. So we'll go ahead and close that now. And we'll go into the settings menu, which again, very, very strong macOS vibes that I am getting from here. So uh, network connections, everything uh, is right here. I'm in a virtual machine, so you know, I just have that wired uh, ethernet going on. Display and appearance, so you can change the resolution here. Uh, by default, it is pretty low and it didn't, automatically adjust when I installed my virtual machine. So that's something that uh, would be nice if it automatically picked the right one by default. Maybe it does on hardware. I don't know. I haven't actually installed it to hardware yet. Um, but we can change like the rotation here. So this is gonna be uh, kind of annoying. <laughs> Why don't we go back and let's see, it made everything small. And I chose the wrong resolution. Okay, so we're not gonna mess with the rotation. <laughs> How about the scale? Let's see. Is this, um, okay, it needs to, us to relog to take effect, so that's fine. Not gonna do that. Appearance, so here you can change it from light to dark. And this is actually one thing uh, that I will praise Cutefish about. So. I open up a bunch of other apps, like uh, let's do just a file manager and a calculator. So right now they're dark, but if I go to light, they all change. And it's very seamless. This is not the case with all distros and all desktop environments. I can't tell you how many times I've run into this problem on like XFCE and KDE, where you'll change it to a dark theme, right? And then it makes all the text white. But then if you go to light, it'll be white on white or it'll be black on black and then you can't really read anything and it just, it's a terrible, terrible experience. And especially to someone who's new to Linux, you know, if they just change to a dark theme and it ends up breaking their whole desktop, it's going to not make them very confident in the OS and probably running back to uh, Microsoft or to Apple. And we can also change the dock around, so of course, down here, you've got the dock in the middle. Uh, we can change it to be either on the left or the right. That's probably what most people would do since um, extended displays, you know, widescreen displays are so common. So you'd probably want to use more of the real estate going left or right instead of top or bottom. And you can also change the size of your dock and you can also uh, change it to always hide or, you know, smart hide, anything like that. But I'm gonna keep it to always show for now. Uh, and I'm gonna put it right down back at the bottom. And speaking of this dock, one thing that is kind of silly is if you see down here on the dock, there's no browser, okay? Even though if I go into the launcher here, Firefox browser is right here. And I think at one point in time, there was a browser down here in the dock because I was watching a video of somebody else reviewing Cutefish and they had the Chromium browser down here. So at one point in time, they used Chromium and they put it down here, but when they switched to Firefox, for some reason they took it out. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like I think I'll unpin this calculator cause I mean, who uses a calculator app on their desktop anyway? And I'll send this to the dock. And that makes more sense. Maybe we'll put it like here. Cause I mean, come on, especially for a user friendly Distro, you gotta have the browser there where it's easily accessible, okay? Most operating systems these days are just bootloaders for the browser anyway. So there we go. And uh, yeah, of course, we've got Firefox as our browser, which is fine. Okay, Firefox is a great browser, even though it's got a very low market share. 
Maybe Chromium would be a better choice for a beginner friendly distro because chances are they're gonna have a Google account and they might have all their browser history and stuff synced up with that so they can just sign in with that account and then boom. Automatically a lot of their life gets imported into their operating system. Uh, I don't know. Comment down below what you think about that. Now I've been saying a lot of good things about Qfish OS, but let's talk about the bad things. In fact, let's actually talk about the worst thing, which you might have seen if you're subscribed to the heckin' r slash Linux subreddit, is that, rest in peace, Qfish OS, you were amazing, this, this post from yesterday. And uh, yeah, it's true. If we go over to the GitHub page for Qfish OS, you can see that pretty much everything here hasn't had a commit in like two or three or more months, okay? So this project is pretty much dead until this post that was made also to the r slash Linux subreddit by uh, Andro GR saying that uh, they're about to fork Cutefish OS, but they need people's help, right? They need some help from people that know how to maintain a distro. And I think they they really specifically need help uh, from somebody who knows the Qt framework to work on uh, that desktop environment because that, that's kind of the main point of Cutefish OS and you see a lot of people here and, and I kind of agree with them that instead of saving the distro, why not just save the desktop environment, right? Because that's pretty much what everyone seems to really like about it, but this person... They've just said that they're better at maintaining a distro versus a desktop environment. So yeah, they're gonna breathe some new life into cute fish. That's the cool thing that we can do with open source. If the original devs decide to abandon a project or they just don't have time to work on it, somebody else can pick up the slack and maybe turn it into something even more amazing. So yeah, if you use Reddit, uh, definitely hit up Andro GR and help them with that. And then there's some questions that he's leaving us about changes that we should make to Qfish. So what would we like to see from a distro like Qfish? Any recommendations, improvements? I would say keep it super user-friendly, um, which I know may go against some of the uh, Unix philosophy uh, to a certain extent, but look, there's different distros for a reason, right? If you want to use like Gentoo or Arch and you want to make a super minimalist uh, OS and you don't want to use system D and things like that, then you're welcome to go do it. But in terms of getting beginners to use a distro, we want to make things as easy as possible for them. And um, I don't know, maybe uh, start with putting the browser in the dock. That's very important. Uh, Qfish OS was using both Ubuntu and Debian as its own base. I've also thought of Arch, but I'm worried about stability and user friendliness. Uh, what do you think would be better out of these three? I would say stick with Debian. Arch, yeah, you don't want it to be Arch-based because then it's going to be a bleeding edge distro. Well, potentially, I mean, you can lock packages to make it not automatically pull in a new kernel every time you update uh, everything. But I don't think making it Arch-based since it's kind of a beginner-friendly distro is the best idea because ultimately when people start... Googling for help about things with Pac-Man, for example. They're going to get the Arch Wiki, they're going to find the Arch forums, and they're probably going to ask questions that are answered in the Arch Wiki in the Arch forums, which, as we know, that pisses off Arch users. So we don't want them thinking, oh, everybody in Linux, in the world of Linux, is an asshole and just tells you to read the fucking manual, when in reality, that's mostly an Arch user thing. Uh, believe it or not, on some other, you know, so-called hard distros like Gentoo, if you ask kind of a stupid question in the forums, the devs will actually answer you because in my opinion, the Gentoo community is a little bit nicer than the Arch community. I would also say that the same thing is true for Debian. Uh, and then any particular things you don't like about Qfish OS? No, I mean, it seems fine. Just put a browser in the dock. Uh, and since it isn't really cute fish OS, but rather a fork, he wants some name suggestions. And I'll leave that to you guys. Comment below what you think a good name for cute fish OS should be, or probably comment on this Reddit post. Do both, actually. You can comment on this video to hack the algorithm and then maybe hack the algorithm of this Reddit post to uh, help it gain some more traction instead of all the most of the other nonsensical crap that people talk about in the subreddit.
Well, that's it for this video, guys. Check out Cute Fish. Check out whatever the fork of Cute Fish ends up being called. And have a great day.